This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to OCA's Employee Portal Demo. This will be a brief explanation on how to both access and get the most out of your OCA benefit. We'll start here on OCA's homepage, just as a point of reference. Our website is OCA125.com. To access your portal, you should receive an employee email that will look a little like this. It'll be from OCA's service team from service at OCA125.com. There's a chance that it might file into your junk folder, so please make sure to keep an eye out for this. I've highlighted a couple of notes for you uh, on the portal. You'll see that www.oca125.com slash myoca slash is the quick link to get to the portal access. You'll want to make sure that you select participant login and then select register. Also highlighted are your employee and employer IDs, your employee ID, as it says, is your social with no dashes or spaces. Your employer ID is actually very easy to get to and we'll cover that during this expl explanation. Some additional takeaways listed here as well. Uh, signing up for a text message alert or utilizing OCA mobile are both very useful assets to you as a participant of OCA. You should also be receiving a new debit card if you had previously had a debit card with the previous portal. Now, if we can go back into the website and go to the account login, again, it's oca125.com slash myoca slash and click on participant login. From this window, it'll ask us to sign in, but obviously we haven't made an account yet. so we would go ahead to click register. While we're in the register window, let's look at some of these fields. You're going to have to make a username and a password. Put in your first, last name, email. Uh, if your username is taken, please use a different username. Uh, the system will not allow for duplicates, so please keep that in mind. Let's go on down to the registration ID. If your group has a card, associated to your account, you can click on card number and enter your card number. Uh, if your group does not and you want to use your employer name, you would just very simply start typing in letters until your group's name came up. As we know, our employer ID is our social with no dashes or breaks so we would just go very easy. We want to make sure that we accept the terms of use. And we would hit next. Uh, once we're in the portal, it should look a little something like this. As soon as you log in, you have your personal dashboard. You have my accounts. You have my recent transactions, my alerts. And if there's any documents required for submission, they'll also pop up for you. Uh, also, if you have a direct deposit option, that will appear on the top right as well. Looking in, uh, everything is a click away for your account. If you want to view any recent claims that came in, submit a manual claim, resolve card transactions if you have them, or set up an HSA bill pay if you have one. Uh, all very useful for you. Let's go to submitting a manual claim. Submitting a ma manual claim, very straightforward, very easy. We're going to select the service date, make sure it's within our plan year, so it's reimbursable. And service date, we can leave as the same date. The claimant is the person receiving the service. So we can go with sample employee in this instance. And the reimbursement method depends on your group. You'll either have a check, direct deposit, or both. We can go with check on this one. Service type, also very easy. We just click down here and we select whatever service is applicable. Uh, we'll go with in-network deductible office visit. 
going for the claim amount. That is going to be the participant responsibility. In this example, we can just put 120, we'll say. Whom shall we pay? We always want to pay ourselves. Uh, it's a lot easier for us to take the money that we receive and pay our providers than getting money back from our providers due to any error. Uh, how are we? How many payments? We'll set up a one-time payment for this transaction. Hit next. Documentation very important. Attaching a claim receipt very easy. We can just click here and we can browse our PC. Uh, for any documents, or if we have our carrier window up and we have an EOB we'd like to place, we can attach an electronic copy for that. and We would hit next in that example. Or we can submit a claim without a receipt for now, knowing a receipt is required for approval, so we would validate that transaction later. Uh, validating the transaction later without any documentation would most likely result and a holdup of the payout, specifically because we cannot pay out any claims we do not have documentation for. So then we would go on to confirmation if we had an a attachment for it. So we go to validate later. And this is what our confirmation window would look like. We know how much we requested. We know how we are going to get it. We know who it's for, and we know the service type and the date. Uh, we can go ahead and approve this, and then we would hit submit. Easy as you like, you have thank you for processing. Processing can take from three to five business day standard. And if you have questions, you can always reach out to our member service department at 1-855-OCA-0777. From here, we can submit another claim or we can open a claims list to see, or we can print a claims form. Uh, going back to the home page. we can go into My Alerts. This will be a very useful tool for you going forward. We find that a lot of people check their text messages. They do not check their emails. So the easiest way to get around this is that we would go ahead and add a phone number to our portal on the right-hand side, enter our phone number. This is a list of the carriers that are supported for it, and then we would hit Submit. From there, very easily we can decide how we want to be communicated to uh, for any important information that OCA would try to get to us. Account balance statements, uh, dep direct deposit amount change, HSA online statement if it's applicable, manual claim entered. Very important notifications. We want to make sure that we can tailor it for you. Going back to the home page, if we have any documentation required for a card swipe, you can just click Add Receipt right here and drag and drop the documentation you need. Again, real straightforward for you. We just want to make as many tools available to you as possible. Continuing on, we can go to My Accounts and view our benefit accounts, our transactions, Claims Express if applicable, and online enrollment if applicable. If we go to Benefit Accounts, we can see that very clearly here we have an HRA example. In this HRA example, we have the total year allocation that's available. So that's the most you can be reimbursed for your plan year. We also have your plan start, plan end, last day to submit claims, and last day of spending. Uh, again, this is an example. This is not your cap. This is a beta example in this portal for you. So please do not uh, assume that this is what your caps are. Uh, going into here, you can view the details for your account, transactions, or again, we can go back to that submit claim window. If we go to transactions, we can see that these are there was only one claim submitted for an in-network deductible for this uh, for this particular plan. Uh, this transaction was approved because it's highlighted green. Anything pending. So if you didn't submit documentation when we were submitting that claim, will be pending. Uh, anything orange will be listed as denied, uh, most commonly due to lack of documentation. If we go back to my accounts and we go back to benefit accounts, we can see that if I have multiple accounts, right? So if I don't just have an HRA and I have an FSA as well, 
I can scroll down and see what my pending balance is for it. And again, I can also see my plan start, plan end, and last day to submit claims. We can also jump to resources, forms and documents. In the forms and documents page, there should be a employee benefit guide and a plan description sample. If you ever need to reference uh, what is eligible in your plan or what your plan details are, please always reference your plan document. Going forward here, we also have a video library for you. The video library is full of videos that are IRS approved. These videos are uh, certified to be very educational for you should you want to know more about your benefits and why the way they work the way they work. So if we can continue on here, I'd like to go to your messages. So if you have any messages, uh, we can see in here, your recent claim has been denied, right? So this was a claim that was submitted earlier on. And the nice thing about this system is that this system will give you a lot more detail than most systems will. This system will let you know why you were denied your claim. So if we go to notes and we highlighted here, you needed a detailed summary page of the EOB that was not provided. Because of this, the claim was denied. And if we keep looking forward here, we can see that $500 was requested. And because of there being a lack of documentation, uh, there was no payout. Everything was denied. So continuing on here, we also have alerts, right? So if we had set up our text messaging, uh, we would not only receive these via notification in here, we would receive the alerts via text message. Uh, so in here, we can see participant claim action entry. This was the claim that we just did. So it's dated. It says that we did this at 11.24 a.m. Let's you know who the administrator name is. It gives you all the detailed information you need. The transaction type claim. The service date that we had selected was December 1st. We can print this if we need to for reference, and we can close it out if we're comfortable with what was set. Going back to the dashboard, if I want to know if my transaction was paid out, all I would have to do is go to who I want to view recent claims. So as we see here, the action needed claims will be brought up to the top. Uh, it's not based on data service. It's based on if you need to and do anything transaction-wise. If you need to submit a receipt, if something was denied, these will all be brought to your attention quicker than the approved. So again, if we needed to submit any documentation, we would just click Add a Receipt, and we would drag and drop any documentation we needed to. Approved transaction list here is pretty lengthy. Uh, if we can click on one that has documentation, you have the receipt attached here. The reimbursement method was checked. The reimbursement date is also listed, October 3rd. The date of service was October 1st. So we're looking in here, if you have Claims Express, any Claims Express transactions will also be listed here. So if you're not sure if you had been paid out for a claim or if we received information for a claim, this would be the window that you would go into to check and thankfully, this one is a lot uh, more detailed than most portals would be in letting you know what documentation you had for it. Going back to the home page, if I have an FSA or an HSA, I can click on the marketplace and I can go onto the FSA HSA store. This will provide me uh, the ability to spend down if I have an FSA, if I have some money that I'm trying to not lose out on, if I have an HSA and I have funds that I feel I can be uh, fruitful with, I can go ahead and shop on the HSA store. There are also several other assets in here. You can go to Goodbye RX. We also recommend GoodRx.com. We have Zendi Health as well. And lastly, we also have virtual hearing solutions. Uh, these are all useful tools for you. Again, we want to give you as many resources as possible so that you can get the most out of your account. 
Now, if you need support, we have announcements. We have FAQs, communication settings. There's also using this site as well with several tools for you to access once you are in the portal. There's also contacting us. Should you need to get in touch with us, this is to the Office of Compliant Administration, that is OCA. You can address who this is from, you can CC anybody, and you can send us a subject and send us an email in, and we will get back to you promptly for it. That concludes the employee portal. Uh, with the employee portal, if there are any questions, you can always contact OCA by our number listed on the top at one eight five five. OCA 0777, or you can contact service at OCA125.com. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope this was informative.